Thank you for choosing the SNL Fan Podcast, and I'm your host, just some guy named Jay. And in this installment of the SNL Fan Podcast, what we're going to talk about is uh, the newest cast member to join SNL. Uh, They finally found uh, another black woman to join the cast, as you already know, and her name is Sashir Zameda. And uh, I've been getting a lot of requests uh, and a lot of uh, messages saying that you all want me to speak on her and what do I think about her being hired and and about you know why she was picked above uh, you know you know instead of someone else um and I'm going to give my opinion on that um and I also want to say too Sasha Zameda was also a part of my list I, I just recently did a list uh, about 2 months ago uh you know it was the top well 24 black female comedians that should be on SNL and um, she was actually uh, one of the 24 that I had on my list, so I'm, I'm, I'm you know, pretty, you know, I'm proud to hear that somebody that I listed on my list actually made it to SNL. Um, but before I even get into all that, I want to give a shout out. I want to give a shout out to Vibes Live. I'm going to put the link in the information box below, like I always do. Vibes Live is a 24-hour live stream with lots of different shows, lots of different, different, excuse me, lots of different segments on Vibes Live, uh, and a lot of the shows and segments are hosted by Robin Lynn, who is also the program director and producer of Vibes Live. Um, you know, they play music from all genres, uh, mostly urban music, you know, rap, R&B, and gospel. Um, <clears throat> they also do ministries on there as well, along with the gospel music. Um, and they also give lots of uh, useful information, have lots of uh, positive guests on there that you know talk about their projects and the things they have going on. Uh, I've also been on Vibes Live quite a number of times too. Um, and also, uh, they also play some of my podcasts on Vibes Live. So definitely check out Vibes Live. Again, the link is the information box below. And, uh, or you can check them out at VibesLive.com. All right? Now, uh, let me get into this podcast. Sash years and made her. Sash years and made her. Uh, now, you know, like I said, I'm glad she, she, uh, somebody from our list made it. Um, and somebody, a, a few of y'all pointed out, <laughs> said it, said it when I, when I talked about her in, on the, uh, on, on my list, it didn't seem like I was too impressed, they said. Um, but I, I you know, I just want to say overall, I think she's a great performer and she's funny. Um, but just being honest, if I ranked the 24 women that I had on my list, she honestly wouldn't be at the top. She would be somewhere in the middle or or a middle, kind of upward middle, maybe. Um, I don't know exactly what number I'd rank her as, but she definitely wouldn't be in the, the upper echelon or the upper, maybe, I don't even think top 10, maybe, you know, um, unfortunately. Um, and this is nothing against Sasha as a maid. She is, she is talented. Um... She, yeah, she is talented and she is funny, but I don't think they picked the best of the best, um, you know, um, and, 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 and for the, you know, the 24 women that they actually did, you know, they, they had 12 in Los Angeles and 12 in New York and the ones that were on that list, I felt like it was, it was a lot of women on that list, list who I thought was just way, you know, way funnier than, you know, Sash is the Mater, like Brisha Webb, Brisha Webb, I feel like she's the, She's the black female Andy Kaufman, you know, with her characters and things. Uh, Darmira Brunson, uh, she, oh my God, uh, Simone Shepard. I think Simone Shepard should have been hired as a writer. And um, But I'm glad they did pick the one. I'm going to talk about uh, LaKendra Took, Tooks and Leslie Jones in another podcast. But, you know, yeah, but I think Simone Shepard, she would have made a great writer with the with the content that she has on the online. Um, Gabrielle Dennis, I, you know, I looked at her stuff. She's very funny. I also remember her from the game. You know, she was Derwin Davis's baby mama, and um, you know, and and, and I, she also worked with uh, Mikey Day too, who was a writer on the show on SNL right now. Um, <clears throat> let's see, Amber Ruffin, who I didn't have on my list because I was I wasn't really aware of her. Uh, you know, uh, I, 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 and, and you know, and then after I started doing research on the ones that I didn't know about, you know, like I, I checked out her sketches on Robot Down. And Amber Ruffin, wow, you know what I'm saying? Like she is very, very talented. Uh, but you know, Seth Meyers snagged her for his show. You know that you know that's coming out in February. You know he takes over for Late Night. Um, you know, but uh, and you know also Tiffany Haddish, she's very funny too. Uh, 
but the thing about Tiffany Haddish is she just strikes me as a stand up. You know, she doesn't she doesn't I don't I can't really picture her doing too many sketches and things like that. I mean, although I mean, you know, they they've had lots of stand ups on Saturday Night Live, of course, you know, a good number of them, mostly improv people. But she even though she's she's kind of animated in her uh, you know, in her stand up, she I just see her just you know, with a mic in her hand, telling jokes. I, I don't see her putting on different wigs and doing voices and then characters and impressions and stuff like that. But Tiffany Haddish said one thing that I definitely agree on. Uh, she said uh, in one of the little blogs, one of the little the little articles, little tidbits or whatever, she said that, you know, she said that they already know who they have. They already picked her. You know, we're just wasting our time. <laughs> you know, they, they're doing this for a big publicity stunt. And, um... And that's a part of my uh, of my theory too. I think that they already had Sashiers and Meta picked um, before, you know. And they and they, and they pretty much did this little secret. It wasn't much of a secret though. This little, these little secret auditions, so people could talk about it, so it could create more awareness for the upcoming show in January. Um, and I think that's pretty much what it was. And the reason why I said they already knew that they were going to pick Sashiers and Meta is for two reasons. All right. Um, one thing I'd like to say is Sashir Zameda is the only one out of all these women, out of most of all these women, who actually took the steps or took the career path to get on SNL. Um, not a lot of the women were doing that. They were just stand-ups in Los Angeles or they were trying to get roles in, in different films and different television shows and things like that. You know, they didn't really go to Groundlings, uh, Second City, uh, or, um... The Upright Citizen Brigade, which is where Sashir Zameda performed at, Upright Citizens Brigade Theater. Um, and that's where Saturday Night Live usually gets their people, those places, Second City, uh, Groundlings, or Upright Citizens Brigade. And really, black women didn't perform there. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? And so, and, 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 and on top, so they didn't really get, I guess, have too many. I guess if, I guess if Groundlings and Second City and all those places were filled with black women, I think they probably would have they would have definitely hired another black woman after Maya Rudolph. Um but I you know, I, I think it's just that since there's not too many to choose from in those you know, those uh those those farm teams or whatever, they don't you know, they're not gonna go out of their way. I think they're not gonna go you know, go to these little chitlin circuit or these little hole in the wall clubs and get somebody that's very talented and, and try to groom them for S N L. They're going straight to the uh to the places where they normally go. So um so like I said, Sashiers and Maida took the white girl route. She took the white woman route on SN to get the SNL. She I mean she basically did what like you know, like Abby Elliott and what Bobby Moynihan and them do. You know, they they performed the Upright Citizen Brigade, made a name for themselves there, <clears throat> and they got on Saturday they got on Lauren Michaels and Saturday Night Live's radar, you know. Um and that well that's one reason. But the second thing is I wanna say, and most of you probably didn't even know this. Sashir's a maid already, uh, she all already. <laughs> it's like a little kid with a speech problem or something. Why should I be doing a podcast, right? Uh, Sashir's a maid was already hired by Lauren Michaels to perform, to do skits on the Above Average Network. So she was already part of the mafia. You know, she was already a part of Lauren Michaels, uh, you know, she was already part of Lauren Michaels Mafia. And so when I guess when the uh, the public lobbying came out and everybody was making it clear that they wanted to see another black woman on SNL, um, I think Lauren Michaels went on ahead and said, OK, well, we're just going to upgrade Sashir Zameda. You know, I already have, you know, she's already a part of uh, of my system here. You know, she's on Above Average Network. Why don't I just put her on the show? You know. Um, and I and I know a lot of you are saying, okay, well, if you had a black woman on on above average on his above average network, how come he just didn't hire her before? And you know, um, this goes back to what Keenan Thompson said. You know, we never find they never find anyone that are ready. <laughs> and I and I and I think that Sashir Zameda may not have been ready when she was on Above Average Network. I think Lauren Michaels wanted to kind of you know kind of groom her a little I don't know maybe he wasn't grooming her maybe you know maybe she's just you know she just did sketches on above average network maybe it's not that serious like I'm thinking it is but I'm thinking maybe he felt that maybe she needed to kind of tighten up and and perform a little more before he decided to make that uh, official make it official you know and have her on SNL um 
you know, to see what she see what she could do. Because basically, just looking at the things I've seen on the demo reels and the YouTube sketches and the stuff she's done with Doppelganger, and I have not checked out the web series she's she's doing with uh, Nicole Byer, but I definitely am because I've after a podcast interview I heard Sashir's and made a do with I forget who forget the host name. She talked about uh the pursuit of sexiness and I was like, Oh, that sounds like a good series. I'm gonna definitely check that out. Um what was I going with this? I forgot. I lost my train of thought. Yeah, yeah, back to Zameda. Um, yeah, yeah, yeah. She showed potential, but it didn't seem like she had it. You know, like, it didn't seem like, like, Brisha Webb, Darmira Brunson, all of them, you know, Darmira Brunson, uh, Jay Farrow uh, suggested her. It seemed like they were ready. Like, they were just polished. They just, they performed like they've just been doing this for years. And Sashir Zameda kind of seemed like, you know, like, like, you know, she's just getting her feet wet. She's just kind of learning some things, and she could, she might have been performing for ye for ye for maybe I don't know. Like she probably could have been performing since she was a kid. Who knows? But uh, but just seeing the things I've seen on YouTube and things like that, I, I kind of thought like, well, you know, that could have been tightened up, or that could have been a little tweaked, or she could have she could have you know she could have presented it this way or that way, you know. Um, but you know, like I said, I'm just a I'm just a critic. <laughs> I'm not a professional. Uh, you know, I'm I'm not a, you know, I'm not in that, you know, she's she's definitely funnier than I am apparently, you know. But uh <laughs> but I I think that's I think Lauren Michaels maybe would have hired her before. I mean, you know, he probably would have hired her when he hired Cecily Strong and them if Sash Shears and Maida was knocking out home runs then. But I also think too that they wanted to create a demand, you know, cuz uh nobody's talking about the Asian people on Saturday Night Live. Nobody's talking about Hispanic people on Saturday Night Live. They're not even, I mean, we get, they have not seen Pedrad and no Indian people are really even caring like that. It doesn't seem like. But it seems like the one group of people that even white women and white men were even saying should be on SNL is a black woman. They've been saying, yo, why not a black woman? Why not a black woman? We want to see another black woman. We want to see, they've been, they've been saying that since they hired A.D. Bryant. They've been talking about hiring a black woman. Um, and I think Lauren Michaels wanted to make everybody's licks, make everybody want to lick their lips and go, oh my God, what's, come on, come on, come on, you know, before um, he actually went on ahead and made that move. You know, that's what I, that's what I think, you know. Um, and there's some other things I wanted to say too, but I had to redo this podcast because the, the, my, you know, my stuff shut up, shut down on me and... <laughs> <laughs> I lost all the things I was saying, so I had to pretty much do this again. But in the upcoming podcast, I'm going to talk about uh, you know Leslie Jones and Lakendra Tooks being writers and what I think about them, and uh, and I also want to uh, bring up Carrie Codet. I think I say like you know the one who wrote the article. Well, she's been she's been running off at the mouth of a lot about Lauren Michaels uh, because it's kind of uh, well, you know what? I got time. I'm going ahead and I'm going to talk about Carrie Codet right now. Um, I think, speaking of publicity stunts and, and media blizzards and hype and all this stuff like that, because that's what I, all I think this really was. It was just some big, really big hype thing to get people, you know, checking for the show and, and boost up the ratings and things like that. Um, Carrie Codet, uh, she wrote an article in the Huffington Post criticizing Saturday Night Live for the lack of diversity. Um, and she's also been in other blogs talking about, oh, Lauren Michaels should have been hired a black woman, da-da-da, da-da-da. And um, and it was surprising to me that Carrie Condit ended up being one of the you know the final three that Lauren Michaels was was wondering if he should, he should have on the show, but I think that's also like it was is another publicity stunt. It was a way to kind of look at you know so Lauren Michaels. It's kind of th it's one of those things like be the better man kind of thing, and I think Lauren Michaels, you know, even though he he got that you know that backlash and that criticism from Carrie Condit. I think he wanted to show that, hey, I don't have a problem with this. I don't have a problem with what you said. I don't have a problem with what you said about my show and said about how I'm running it. I don't have a problem with you. I want to give you a shot, you know, and 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 I think it was, you know, they, they put her up there just, just so Lauren, so who can make Lauren Michaels look good. And it's like a win-win situation on both ends. Although Carrie Cottett didn't become a cast member or she wasn't picked. You know, it gave her a, it gave her a boost. More people know who she is. Um, I guess maybe you know more people gonna follow her on Twitter. 
Um, I didn't really know who she was. I'm, I read the article. I've been read the article, but I didn't put two and two together. She was one of the performers and this and that. Um, so that, you know, that was a, um, that, that's, I mean, actually it's a good look for Lauren Michaels and a good look for Carrie Cotted for this little, <laughs> this little beef or whatever. That's what I'm gonna call it, uh, between them and for him that, you know, you know, or then again, also, like I said, nobody lost out in that because Carrie Cotted, no more people know who she is now. You know, um, because of this. But uh, I also want to say about Lorne Michaels, I think he might have wanted to do that to kind of maybe, I don't know, I won't say spiteful. Uh, I don't know, kind of show her, I don't I say teach her a lesson, but kind of, I don't know, kind of dangle a carrot in front of her and then snatch it away. You know, to show her like, hey, you know, okay, you you said something about me in your, your little article. All right, okay, we're gonna, I'm gonna let you be on the show. Psych, you know, what I'm saying it, there. and then snatch it from her, you know. Um, but either way, Carrie caught it, and and I got to see how talented she was because I wouldn't have checked her out on my own. Um, I mean, I, maybe I would have, but she just wasn't on my radar until all this happened, you know. And um and, and she is very talented. She's very funny too. Like her her stand up. Her actually, I'm gonna be real with you. Her stand up is funnier than uh Sashir Zameda's. And Sashir Zameda got jokes too, though. Don't get me wrong. Sashir Zameda, because um, I like the little bit where Sashir Zameda talks about uh she was walking home. She was walking home, and some guy flashed her, and she was like, eh, nah, seen it. Nah, I'm, I'm, I'm not into that. And she said, oh my god, I wasn't even phased by it. Is something wrong with me? I, I, a guy could flash me. And she went on to this whole thing about that. That was pretty funny. But, eh, Carrie Cotter, did. Carrie Cotter got stronger, harder hitting jokes, in my opinion. Um, and I would love to have them all as a guest. Every every single woman who didn't make it or did, you know, or whatever, I would love to. I'm going to I'm gonna try to hit them up, you know, to see if I can get them as a guest on the show, you know, kind of pick their brains. Because, uh, you know, my following is growing, especially after I, um, I did the, you know, after this stuff about the, uh, the lack of diversity and all this stuff. A lot of people have been searching my videos and, uh, and been hitting me up. And I, and I really thank you for the new followers and the new subscribers and, and just the people that's just uh, been contacting me, asking for my opinions. Um, and like I said, moving forward, you all are welcome to send me messages and say, hey, just some guy named Jay, what's your opinion on this? And I'll do it. Um... Okay, I'm I'm kind of rambling on, talking too long, but yeah, that's my overall opinion on Sasha as a mater. I think, bottom line, I just want to say she was already part of the mafia. She was a part of Above Average Network, and he just said, "Hey, I'm just going to upgrade you since you're already a part of the family," you know. Um, but what are your opinions? You know, what do you want to say about all this? Also, in the upcoming podcast, I'm going to talk about um, like I, said, I already said that Le Le Leslie Jones and, and Lakendra Tooks. Yeah, yeah, I already said that. Um, is there anything else I want to say? Oh, yeah, yeah, check out Vibes Live. Again, I'm going to put the link in the information box below. You, know, you can check them out at vibeslive.com. Um, let's see. Uh, is there anything else I want to say about this? I feel like I'm missing something. I feel like there's something else I need to, um, another point I want. I need to make about Sash Years of Meta. Uh, no, I guess that's it. You know, just check her out, and I'm going to definitely, oh, yeah, one last thing I did want to say about her. I read somebody quote. I forgot who the quote was. Should have took the note better. Somebody said she better be funnier than she is black. And I say amen to that quote. She, I don't, you know, don't, don't. I, I just, I just hope that Sasha is made. It just doesn't end up being a token, uh, you know, just a token that she actually, you know, she's on there to be funny, not on there to be black, you know. Um, but we'll see. We'll see. I hope she does really. And she does a great job. I hope she does better than those uh, some of those YouTube videos I saw. You know, so I just want to say that. All right. Um, oh, another thing I'd like to say too, moving forward. I well, okay. I need to. I, I, I'll talk about this later. I'm, I'm rambling on. The podcast is getting too long. Hey, y'all, attention spans ain't gonna get this far. All right. Well, I'll talk about it later. Um, that's all I like to say for now. I'm just some guy named Jay for now. And good night, and have a pleasant tomorrow.